since the Google Meet didn't work with a lot of people in the sound, I'm just going to go back through some examples and redo what I did in the Google Meet. Um, now, this is going to cover the th the video notes that you were supposed to do last Wednesday when I was absent from school, all right? So if you have not yet completed last Wednesday's assignment, make sure that you go out there, do those video notes, take those notes, and then complete that assignment as well, all right? I am just going to touch or hit on highlights out of what you were supposed to have watched and learned last week, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is um, the trig functions in the various four quadrants, okay? So you were given in um, the video that you watched an acronym for all students take calculus, okay? So all students take calculus, okay? And that was an acronym to help you remember. It goes counterclockwise around, all right? The A stands for all, all right? So all trig functions are positive in this first quadrant, okay? In the second quadrant, that S stands for sine and cosecant. All right, those are the only two that are positive in that second quadrant, which means all the other trig functions in this quadrant are going to be negative. All right, the T stands for tangent and cotangent. Okay, so those are the only two positive ones that are in this quadrant. Okay, and then the C in the fourth quadrant is cosine and secant, and those are the only two that are positive in that quadrant. All the other ones are negative. All right, now across the board, we can just take this and memorize it, and then for the very specific questions that are in your textbook. All right, so one of those questions, all right, is going to be, they're going to give you clues, like they're going to tell you that sine theta is less than zero, and then they're going to tell you maybe cosine theta is less than zero. All right, well, that's clues about theta. And the question is going to say, okay, what quadrant does theta lie in? Well, we clearly can use this chart to answer this question. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, right here it says sine is less than zero, all right, which is negative. If something's less than zero, it's negative. All right, and here it's telling you cosine is less than zero, so cosine then would be negative as well. All right, now what's going to happen is you're going to go up here and you're going to go, okay, well, where is sine negative? All right, well, everything's positive here. Sine is positive here. So that means sine is negative in these two quadrants. Okay, it's kind of like deductive reasoning here. So three, all right, and four are my possibilities for that one. Okay, then I'm going to take a look at cosine. Well, where is it negative? Everything's positive here, all right, and cosine is positive here. So cosine's positive in these two, which means it has to be negative in these two quadrants, okay? So my two choices would be quadrant two and quadrant three. And then what you're going to find out when you do this is there's some overlap there. So in quadrant three, they are both negative. So what does that tell me? That tells me that th theta lies in quadrant three. All right, so that is specifically how you use that chart for that specific type of question. All right, but the thing is, you need to know this for other questions, just any question in general where you are going to have to consider, okay, well, is it positive, is it negative, you know, how does it work here? Okay, so an example might be, they might say, um, find the exact value of each trig function, okay, so all six. and they're gonna give you two pieces of information. They might tell you that sine theta is a negative 12 over 13, all right? They might also tell you that, say, theta is in between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, all right? Well, as soon as they give you some clue about theta, they could be very direct and say theta is in quadrant two or theta is in quadrant three, or they could give you a clue like this well, you know where 180 degrees is, you know where 270 is, so then that clearly tells you then that theta is in quadrant three, all right? Now, this is what may not have been in the videos from um, last week, all right? There is this thing called the bow tie triangle, all right? And if we're using right triangle trig, that definitely is going to be a huge part of it, all right? So I'm basically going to draw a bow tie. All right, and everybody can draw a bow, 
bow tie pretty good, okay? And what this does is it just lets you know how to draw your right triangles in each one of the quadrants, okay? Because here would be a right angle, here's a right angle for this one, here's a right angle for that triangle, here's a right angle for this one, okay? Now, there's my bow tie triangle, okay? And I know I'm in the third quadrant, all right? So this information is based on a right triangle in the third quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead, let's actually use a pink highlighter here. Okay, so this is the triangle that I'm focused on. All right, now, they've given me some information here. If you use your right triangle trig, sine was defined as opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so here's my little theta right in here. All right, well, where's the opposite side? It's over here. So that would be negative 12, which makes sense, right? If that's negative 12, didn't I have to go down to get there? So negative 12. All right, hypotenuse, the hypotenuse of that triangle would be 13. All right, the only side I don't know right here is this side right here. But I could use Pythagorean theorem, and I could come up with that, right? So a squared plus a negative 12 squared equals 13 squared. All right, what, well, a squared, this is just arithmetic. You all can do this without me working through it here. A squared equals, that would be 25, so A is going to be 5. All right, so on a regular Pythagorean theorem, A is 5. All right, but stop and think about this. If I start at the origin and I go to the left, then I could technically label this as negative 5 because it's going in a negative direction there. Now, as long as I actually ne label this negative 12 and I label this as negative 5, if I were to use my right triangle definitions, and used this number as negative 5, this number is negative 12, and this number is 13, then they're always going to turn out to be correct. All right, but if you might have, you know, dropped the negative there or used the positive here and not really labeled this appropriately, then you definitely are going to want to have to come back here and check to make sure it has the right sign. Okay, now let's go ahead and run through our six trig functions. All right, we've got sine of theta, which they already gave us, so we can go ahead and write negative 12 over 13. But then we know cosine theta, and or we need to find cosine, we need to find tangent. All right, and then we also need to find the other six, which would be cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent. Okay, now if I am using just right triangle trig on this, okay, definition of cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, well, here's my theta, adjacent, so negative 5 over 13. All right, tangent is, tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, well, that's a negative 12 over a negative 5 with the negatives, making that a positive 12 over 5. All right, now, as, as we have done, you can have the right triangle trig definitions for these three memorized. Or, since they are the reciprocals of these, you could just flip them around as well. So this would be negative 13 over 12. This would be a negative 13 over 5. This would be 5 over 12. All right, now, if we take that and then come back over here and check, all right, I'm in the third quadrant. So third quadrant, the only two positive values should be tangent and cotangent. Well, if I look at my six values, these are the only two positive ones, which is what should happen. All the others, the other four, should be negative because we're in that quadrant. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. If you had screwed up and not put a negative 5 there, maybe not used a negative 12 there, you were just working with 5, 12, and 13, that's fine. And you would have had 12 over 13 here, but then what you need to do is stop and think. Okay, I'm in what quadrant? I'm in the third quadrant, and this is sine, so it has to be negative. So you can logically think that through as well. Okay? All right, so that takes care of that. All right, now something else that I thought I would touch on is those 30, 60 right triangles and the 45, 45 special right triangles. All right, we did not cover that um, so far, and there have been some questions in Math Excel, so that's why I kind of wanted to touch on just a little bit today some special right triangles. All right, I'm hoping this is a review from your geometry class. All right, you should have done special right triangles in your geometry class. All right, so we've got two of them. We've got a 45-45 right triangle, and then we're going to have a 30-60 right triangle. Okay, now 45-45 right triangle, the legs should be equal. I'm going to try to draw this to scale, but it's really bad. 
All right, if those base angles are 45, then this side and this side has to be equal because the side opposite those base angles, if the base angles match, then those sides that are opposite also has to match. Okay, that again from geometry. All right, so if these two sides are equal, then I could let them be denoted by an X and an X or any variable, it wouldn't matter, but I can use an X. All right, and then for the formula that would be helpful if you memorized, in a 45-45 right triangle, that hypotenuse is X square root of two. All right, so then that means if I know this side is six, then this side is six and this is six square root of two. If they give me the hypotenuse and they tell me it's nine square root of two, then that means the two legs have to be nine. Okay, so it just, it works out really nice that way. Now let's do a, 30, 60 right triangle. Now, that means that my two legs are not gonna be the same length. One's clearly gonna be longer than the other one, so this is my long side, which means that the angle opposite has got to be the bigger one, so there's gotta be my 60, and then this side is the shorter leg, so across from its angle, that's gotta be the 30. So this is a 30, 60. All right, now you are gonna have to memorize how, what the relationship of the sides are in a 30, 60 right triangle. I always start with the smallest side. This is the smallest side of the triangle. It's across from 30. Across from 30, we're going to let that side be x. So if I know what that number is, then I can fill in the rest of the sides really easily. All right. The hypotenuse on the 45 has the radical. The hypotenuse on the 3060 does not have the radical. That's how I remember it. So then I remember that my hypotenuse cannot have the radical. It has a 2 times x, and that's it. And then my side that has a radical in it has to be across from my 60, which is x square root of 3. Okay, and you just have to memorize this. This is on the formula sheet that I gave you. Okay, now let's just go through. I'll do like some really simple, simple examples. All right, we'll do one down here of our 45-45. Okay, so I am going to try to draw it so that it's not drawn exactly like that. Let's flip it around. Again, not drawing a scale because you know, I'm just randomly drawing this, but this side and this side is going to match. All right, so if I told you that the hypotenuse is, say, 9 square root of 2, all right, could you find the other two? Well, the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, and I didn't mark it, but I did with these two sides. Let's say this is 45 and this is 45. All right, I know it's 45, 45. My hypotenuse is x square root of 2, so 9 square root of 2, that means x is 9. So that means this side has to be 9 and this side has to be 9. Okay, so sometimes, depending on what numbers they give you and what sides they give you, this is a real straightforward type of thing. All right, um, let's do another easy one. Okay, let's suppose my right triangle was drawn like this, drawn the way I have. This has got to be the 30, this has got to be the 60, and then let's say that they give you the, well, let's here, let's do it this way. I can even go backwards. Let's say they give you this as uh, 10. All right. So then the question is, what's this side? What's this side? Okay. Now, this one, a little bit harder than the one I actually did in the Google Meet. All right. The hypotenuse is 10. My hypotenuse is 2x. So 2 times what equals 10? 2 times 5 equals 10. In other words, that's like a nice little equation there. 2x equals 10. So x has to equal 5. So in this triangle right here, x is 5. Well, if I know x is side, 5, then the side across from the 30 is 5, and then across from the 60 would be 5 square root of 3. All right, so that one's a little bit more challenging because I had to figure out what x was. In the Google Meet, I had done it and given you the side across from the 60, okay? But you have been doing some questions with these 30, 60, and 45, 45 right triangles in Math Excel. All right, but I think in those, you didn't have to implement these formulas. They just gave you the various sides. You know, they gave you what the sides were and then asked you to answer the question from there. Okay, but you should be able to find missing sides of a 30-60 right triangle, also of a 45-45 right triangle. All right, so I definitely went over that in the Google Meet. All right, and then I also uh, tried to do a question that showed you a comparison between when you're dealing with a point on a circle that's not a unit circle, you can use those uh, y over r, x over r definitions, but you can also use your right triangle definitions. All right, so this is going to be, um, go a little bit more detailed than what I did in the Google Meet. 
uh, trig functions. Um, let's say using a circle with radius r. Okay, so definitely not a unit circle. All right, not a unit circle. So my radius is going to be some other number. Okay, now I am real quickly up here in the corner going to write the definitions for each of the trig functions that you should have gotten from the video that you watched last week. All right, it's sine theta equals uh, y over r. It was cosine theta is equals x over r. Tangent theta is equal to y over x. And then the other three trig functions, which is cosecant theta, which was r over y, secant theta, which was given to you as r over x, and cotangent theta, which was x over y. All right, now you were supposed to watch a video last week which talked about that, introduced it, all that kind of things. All right, now what I want to make a connection here is, yes, you can use those formulas, all right, regardless of whether you use right triangle definitions or whether you use our definitions that are based on a unit circle, but in this case with a different radius, all right, you're still going to get the same answers. And it just depends on how you are going to want to visualize this, okay? So in a question where they say, okay, here's a point, negative 12, 5, all right, it's on a circle with a radius with something other than r, r does not equal 1, Okay, so in other words, r does not equal 1, find six trig values. Now I'm just going to do that. They are a little more wordy in your directions, but we know what we mean there. We're trying to find all six trig values. All right, so what this is, this is a point. It's on a circle, but the radius is not r. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to draw that over here. Okay. Okay, so negative 12, 5. If I were to plot that point, I would go negative 12, I would go up 5, okay? Negative 12, up 5. That's putting this, this point right here, negative 12, 5, is in that second quadrant. All right, now, it is a circle, okay, I'm kind of big on that, but it's a circle. It's on a circle, all right? And the radius, which would be from here to here, all right, I don't know what that radius is right now. Okay, now, it's not one, watch what I do, the bow tie triangle that we talked about, all right, the bow tie triangle in my second quadrant is this, so there's my right triangle in that second quadrant, all right, and from here to here is also the radius, from here to here is the radius, all right, it's halfway across the circle, so it doesn't matter where I draw it. All right, now if this point is negative 12, 5, what's that mean? That means I started at the origin and I went to the left, 12, or negative 12. And if I use that negative, then the signs of my trig function in the second coordinate are going to be correct. Second, second quadrant is going to be correct because this is a negative 12. I went negative 12 to get there, and then I went up 5. Okay, now the only value I don't know is that radius. All right, if I'm going to use these definitions, I need to know that measurement because this would be y over, you know, this is x, this is y. So for sine, it would be 5 over whatever r is, y over r. Okay, or I could also use my right triangle definitions so it doesn't make any difference. All right, but basically what this boils down to is, okay, I'm not on a circle with r equals 1, so I have to find the radius. That, that's got to be my step 1. Okay, so step 1, find r, and you're going to do that with just a good old-fashioned Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so negative 12 squared plus 5 squared equals r squared. All right, 144, again, this is basic arithmetic. You guys can do this. I don't really need to be working all this part out. Let's see, that's 169. Okay, so then my r is 13. Okay, so my r is 13, so that value right there, this side, is 13. Okay, so now I've got all my sides. I could use these definitions. I could also use my right triangle trig definitions. All right, now if I'm going to then find each of my trig values, here, let's go back to black, 
All right. I need to find sine. I need to find cosine. I need to find tangent. I need to find cosecant. I need to find secant. And I need to find cosecant. Or cotangent, sorry. Okay, so let's do right triangle definition. Right triangle definitions, here's my theta. Right triangle definitions for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so I could do opposite over hypotenuse, which would give me a 5 over 13. Okay, so I could do it with right triangle trig. All right, or I could do it with y over r. All right, I'll write that here, y over r. Well, what's my y value? It's 5. And what's my r value that I found? It's 13. So it doesn't make any difference. This is using these definitions. The red right there is using your right triangle definitions. But because I know what quadrant it is, all right, I'm in the, the second quadrant. All right, sine is positive in the second quadrant. Okay, sine is positive in the second quadrant. So I got a positive answer. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and do the right triangle definition first. Okay, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be a negative 12 over hypotenuse, which is 13. All right, so I could do it that way, or I could come up here and I could say, okay, I'm using x over r. Well, my x value is a negative 12, and my r value is 13. All right, so I'm just trying to get you to see that you can do these questions more than one way. All right, and then if we go back and we look at, you know, that chart about you know, what's the values, all right, well, cosine in the second quadrant is supposed to be negative, and my answer is negative. All right, the only two that's positive is sine and cosecant, which doesn't that make sense since these are reciprocal. And if this is negative, then this one will be negative. All right, depending on what I come up with here, which better be negative, it'll be negative over here as well. Okay, so let's use our right triangle definition first. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, opposite is 5, and adjacent is negative 12, which makes it negative 5 twelfths, put that negative in the top so it's not tacky, all right? But again, could I come up here and use these definitions as well? That's y over x. My y value is 5, my x value is negative 12. Again, moving that negative to the top so that it looks nice, okay, would be the way to go, all right? And again, tangent should be negative in the second quadrant it is, all right? Now for these, again, you memorize these definitions, you memorize your right triangle definitions, or you know that these two are reciprocals, so this is 13 over 5. This is put the negative in the top, negative 13 over 12, and again put the negative in the top, negative 12 over 5. Okay, so um, here, let's, in our, let's do this. Okay, this is right triangle trig. Okay, using those definitions, all right, and the blue is the quote, unit, based on a unit circle, okay, so we're, except not a unit circle here, but our unit circle are not equal to one definitions, okay, so, you, same problem, I can work in a multitude of ways, all right, so, that's basically all I had done in the Google Meet, all right, did a, definitely a better job explaining here, because I wasn't messing with the camera, we weren't having sound issues, all right, again, if you did not do the video notes from last week, you have got to go back, make sure you do those, upload them to Google Classroom, complete the Math Excel assignment, all right, and then this should help hopefully solidify everything that you've already listened to in the section. All right, uh, definitely thanks for watching, all right, and hopefully you'll be back in person on Wednesday. See you.